Okay, welcome to the webinar on implementing the accumulated looking paradigm in Experiment Builder. Um, this is kind of a fun little paradigm, so I'm kind of looking forward to uh, today's topic. All right, so in terms of an agenda, first, I'll just give a brief overview of, ex of Experiment Builder. Um, if you'd like more information on how Experiment Builder works, like from the ground up, like the basics of it, then you can check out our support forms, sr-support.com. Let me just quickly show you what I mean here. So if you go to the support forms here, you can find some video tutorials. And when you go in there, you can find an Experiment Builder video tutorial series. So you can check that out to get a more detailed introduction to how Experiment Builder works. Um, and once you kind of understand those basic principles, then, then this should be um, pretty clear. So let's get back to our little PowerPoint. So um, I'll just give you a very brief crash course though um, when we start. Then um, we'll talk about what the accumulated looking paradigm is, uh, just kind of describe it. And then we'll talk about how you can implement that in Experiment Builder. And we'll, we'll talk about an example um, that does like a study test paradigm of the accumulated looking paradigm, or I should say study test version of the accumulated looking paradigm. And so basically in the study phase, the participant, the participant needs to accumulate five seconds of gaze on uh, the, the study image. And then in the test phase, the participant will be presented with two images and they need to get 5,000 milliseconds of gaze across the two different images. Um, so we'll get into the details of that. Okay, so first let me just give you a very brief crash course on Experiment Builder. Basically, Experiment Builder is a software package that allows you to design and build um, experiments for the behavioral sciences and social sciences. So the way it works is it's, it has a graphical user interface and you have these different nodes that you can add to the graph editor down here and you connect the nodes to one another. And then when you run the experiment, it will go through the nodes in the order that they're connected. So you basically build like a flow chart of your experiment and then the experiment will kind of march through that flow chart when you run it. Um, so that's kind of the very basics of it. Again, check out that video tutorial series for a more detailed background. Um, so we'll come back to that in a second, but first I want to give you just um, a more detailed introduction to what the accumulated looking paradigm is. So the accumulated looking paradigm generally works like this. On each trial, one or more images or stimuli of some kind are shown on the on the computer monitor that's presenting stimuli to the participant, the display PC in other words. And the participant must accumulate a certain amount of, of gaze time on the stimulus or stimuli if there's more than one image or stimulus on the screen. And then when they accumulate that amount of gaze time, the trial ends or it moves on to the next section of the trial. Um, so the way this works is the eye tracker is providing the real-time gaze data to the experiment presentation software. And in this case, as we're talking about today, it's providing it to Experiment Builder. You can do this in other programming environments as well, but it's, it's really easy to set up in Experiment Builder. So um, I would kind of recommend to use that for if you're trying to do an accumulated looking paradigm. Um, the Tracker is providing the gaze data to the experimental presentation software, but then the presentation software or experiment builder in this case needs to use that gaze data in some way. So the so experiment builder will be monitoring and tallying the amount of time that the participant has spent viewing the stimulus. And as I mentioned, the trial will end when the required amount of gaze duration has been reached. Um, in terms of its kind of implementation, you can kind of imagine a virtual countdown timer. So when the gaze is on the stimulus, the countdown timer starts. When the gaze leaves the stimulus, the countdown timer stops. And when the timer gets to zero, the stimulus presentation ends. That's kind of the simple way of thinking about this, but it, I think it helps to think about that from the get-go. Um, so 
just keep that in mind as we go through the actual kind of implementation of this design. Let me mention now too that this PowerPoint will be available at the same link where the webinar video is and the experiment builder project that we're going to discuss is going to be at that same page too. Um, so you can check out this PowerPoint um, if you want kind of a quick run through or a reminder of like the, the kind of nuts and bolts of the experiment builder project. Okay. Um, let me just also briefly mention that this paradigm is often used in developmental psychology and other settings where the participants for some reason or another may have a limited attention span. So they, their gaze might be all over the place just because, because of the nature of the, of the population you're studying. And the goal here is to base, basically just to ensure that a certain amount of gaze time has been directed at the stimulus um, for each trial. Um, but as we're going to discuss in this example, you can also use the accumulated looking in something like a test scenario, both to ensure that the amount of gaze time um, on the test images has, has met some criterion and to just log the amount of time that, that, that the participant has spent on each of these multiple test images. So today we'll be talking about in the test phase, um, we'll be talking about an example that in the test phase shows two images. And since we're monitoring the amount of time that they're spending on these images, just to kind of implement the accumulated looking effect, we also might as well just log that amount of time so it's just ready to go for data analysis. So we'll talk about how you can do that as well. Okay. Um, in the example paradigm that we're about to discuss, and again, you can down, you can get that from the same forum post where you're finding this video. There are going to be two phases in each block of the experiment. There's going to be a, a study phase and a test phase. And the study phase um, will present one image on each trial. And then we're, when the participant accumulates five seconds of gaze time on that image, the trial ends. Then after they go through several study trials, in this example, I think it just has two study trials in each uh, study block. <clears throat> after the participant goes through several of those trials, then the test phase begins. And the test phase presents two images on each trial. One of these images on each trial will be um, one of the images that was studied in the study phase. And another, and the other image will be a new image, which we can call a distractor. So we can say that on the, in the test phase, you have one target image, which is one of the studied images, and one new image, which is we'll call a distractor. Um, and in the test phase, when the participant accumulates 5,000 milliseconds total of gaze time across these two images, the trial ends. And so the project is going to not require five seconds on each image. It's going to require five seconds total on either of the two images and can be divided up in any way. But as it's doing this kind of gaze checking, it's also going to be logging the amount of time spent on each of the two images. Um, this project, this example project, just because this type of paradigm is often used in developmental psychology and in, in, those, par in those types of uh, settings, often researchers want to do what's called an automatic drift check. So this project is going to use what's called an automatic drift check. And um, basically, at the beginning of each trial, a cross will be shown on the screen, and you could change that to a movie file or whatever. But in this example, just for simplicity's sake, using a cross. But basically, it's going to present a cross and then wait for the participant to look at that cross for 500 consecutive milliseconds. And um, once the participant does that, the trial's images will appear, and then the accumulated looking uh, process will start. If the participant doesn't look at the cross in 10 seconds, like if the participant doesn't look at the cross for 500 consecutive milliseconds in the first 10 seconds of the trial, then the trial will abort. It will be put back in the kind of queue of trials to do, so it'll be recycled. And then the project will go back into what we call the camera setup mode so that the, the eye tracker can be recalibrated. And the idea here is that maybe the reason the trial didn't start um, was that there was some issue with the calibration. And so the, um, it just, the eye tracker didn't think the participant was looking at the target when they actually were. But it could also just be the case that the participant was looking off and kind of zoning out. 
And so in that case, when you get back to the camera setup, just keep in mind that you can always just press O to skip that recalibration and just start the next trial again. Okay, so let's just first kind of go through some of the nuts and bolts of this, and then we'll take a look at the example in a more hands-on manner. So um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the, tri first let's talk about the auto drift check. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the trial, it's gonna do an automatic drift check. So you'll see that each trial will begin with the display of a cross. So if you double clicked on that action, um, you would see that it's just displaying a cross. And then one of two things can happen. Either they will look at that cross, which will kind of trigger the onset of the images or some time will go out. So um, if they look at th this invisible boundary trigger is set up so that it has a minimum duration of 500 milliseconds. And when that trigger fires, we'll start the trial here. But this timer trigger, which has a duration of 10 seconds, um, like if this doesn't fire first, then this will fire after 10 seconds. And then we will basically log, we will change the value of a variable called should we recalibrate. So there's a variable in this project called should we recalibrate. And it will set the value of that variable to one and then it'll go on to another node that will ensure that this trial will be recycled. So we're not gonna skip the trial altogether. Um, so that's what's happening at the beginning of the trial. And um, when, then when it gets to the, this, this, this stuff I'm showing here is actually in the recording sequence. So this is like in the trial event sequence where like once we've gotten past the prepare sequence and all the other kind of trial preparation stuff. But then when we get to the next trial, at the very beginning of the trial sequence, we're gonna use a conditional trigger to check whether that should we recalibrate variable equals one. And if so, it'll take the experimental flow, it'll follow this little check mark and take the experimental flow down here to give us a little message saying we should recalibrate and then eventually taking us to a camera setup action so we can recalibrate if needed. And if the value is not one, we'll just skip all that stuff and go on to the next trial. So it's it's not very complicated. It's basically, that's just a way to ensure that um, if 10 seconds pass on each trial without a participant looking at the cross for 500 milliseconds, then we're gonna give ourselves an opportunity to recalibrate before the next trial starts. Okay, I just wanted to explain that stuff before we get into the accumulated looking. Um, okay, so now let's talk about, um, since this has a study phase and a test phase, let's talk about how we kind of make sure to do one of those two different trial types on each trial. So at the beginning of, like after we go through that process of that I just described of checking whether we should recalibrate, we're gonna get down here to this check test conditional. And this is another conditional trigger that will check a data source column called block type. And if that's equal to test, then we're going to follow this check mark path and go on to a recording sequence sequence called recording test. And in that sequence, we'll have the test trial structure. If it is not a test trial, then we're going to go over this way and do our recording study sequence, which will present the, the study trial structure. Okay, so that's how we're basically ensuring that we're doing one trial and not the other on each of the iterations of the trial sequence. Okay. So now let's kind of move on to how the accumulated looking effect works. So the, the effect depends on the use of some variables here. And um, if you if you've watched the Experiment Builder video tutorial series, you'll remember that variables just kind of float out there not, and they're not connected to other nodes, but their values can be set and then referenced. Um, they can be set in some way and then used in, in a way if you want. And so we have three variables here. The first one is called time remaining. So that's this one here. And this is gonna store the amount of time that still needs to be accumulated on the trial stimulus for the trial. And at the beginning of the trial, it's gonna be reset to 5,000 milliseconds by the reset var variables action, reset vars action. And just to give you a little bit of foreshadowing, each time the eye, le like each time the eye leaves the image region, the amount of time that was just spent looking at the image is gonna be subtracted from that time remaining value. So you're kind of updating the, the countdown timer 
when the eye leaves the region. And this variable's value is referenced from a timer trigger, um, which is going to basically do the grunt work of the accumulated looking checking. Um, so we're going to have a timer that basically kind of implements this virtual countdown timer effect. We'll see that in action in a second. So we reset this variable to 5,000 at the beginning of each trial, and then every time the eye leaves it, we subtract the amount of time they just spent looking at it from the current value. And that kind of updates the amount of time remaining on our on our kind of countdown timer stopwatch or whatever you want to, however you want to think about it. Okay, so then the second variable is called time accumulated on the target. So since we're doing all this checking of the gaze position um, in order to implement the accumulated looking effect, we might as well also just log how much time the, the participant is, has spent looking at the target and the distractor. So it, this isn't super useful in the study trials because they the time accumulated on the target should always end up being about five thousand milliseconds because that's the amount of time they need to accumulate before the trial ends but on this on the test trials so in the study trials um, that time accumulated target isn't super useful but on the test trials um this will tell us like we're checking to make sure that they've accumulated five thousand milliseconds across the two images and so this will tell us how much of that five thousand milliseconds was directed at the target image and then the time accumulated distractor will tell us how much of that time was um, directed at the distractor image. So this time accumulated distractor variable is the third variable, and it's similar to the, the one called time accumulated target, um, except it's logging how much time they spend looking at the distractor for the test trials. And it's this time accumulated distractor is only used in the test trials, okay? So those are the kind of three variables to keep in mind. And now let's take a look. This is what the study, this is what the recording study sequence looks like. And um, after we get past the kind of automatic drift check that we discussed a minute ago, we're going to present the trials image using this display images action. And then we're going to kind of start a loop. And here's where it gets kind of fun or interesting. Okay, so basically we present the images and then immediately go to this null action. And I'm calling it null action off image in the example. And it's, it's not really doing anything. It's just saying, let's start waiting. Okay, so when you get to a null action, nothing really happens. You just start waiting. Okay, and now in this case, we're waiting for the eye to go onto the image. And so right after that null action is an invisible boundary trigger whose triggering region is set to an interest area around the image that's being presented. And it's within properties checked, meaning that when the eye goes within that interest area that's kind of surrounding our image, this trigger will fire, okay? And at that point, we'll go to another null action, okay? So the first thing we're doing is just waiting for the eye to go onto the, onto the image. Then once the eye goes onto the image, um, from this point here, when we're on the image, we'll be waiting for one of two things to happen. Okay, so that's the same point here. So we have the, I just cut, this is the same structure here. I'm just trying to highlight two different components of that structure. So the two things that can happen are, first of all, this timer trigger could fire. So while they're on the image this is kind of like our countdown timer if um the remaining time the time remaining variable basically if the remaining time um goes down to zero like if we have kind of accumulated the amount of time that we have left then we're going to end the trial and so the way that works is that this timer trigger here it's getting cut off here, but if you if you get if you download the PowerPoint, you'll see this is the duration property here, and the duration property is referencing the time remaining variable. And remember, at the beginning of the trial, that time remaining uh, variable is set to 5,000. So the first time we get to this, that timer's duration is going to be equal to 5,000. Okay, and so if they look at that image for the first time and they stay on that image for five seconds then this timer trigger will fire and we'll end the trial. 
But let's say they don't stay on that image for five seconds, and instead the second thing that can possibly happen happens. And that second thing is that the participant could leave the image. And so while we're here waiting at the null action on image, the participant could look away. And so you can see this invisible boundary trigger, it's, it's actually very similar to the on image trigger, except it's within properties unchecked. That means this trigger will fire when the participant leaves that interest area, okay? And so that's the second thing that can happen. And if that happens, you'll see eventually it's gonna take us back up here to start waiting again for the participant to look at, at the image. But before we do that, we're going to update the remaining duration. Okay, so we're basically gonna update the duration that's used when the participant looks back onto the, to the image. So this is an update attribute action and, and it can be used to change the values of the variable nodes. And you can see what it's doing is it's saying our time remaining in this first line here, the time remaining variable is gonna be equal to its current value here minus, and then in parentheses we have here, the difference between the time they left the image, so invisible boundary off image, triggered data time, that's the time when they left the image, minus the time when they looked at the image, which is invisible boundary on image, triggered data time. So basically what we're doing is saying the time remaining variable is equal to its current value minus the time they just spent looking at the image. So in their most recent instance of looking at the image, how much time did they spend looking at it? And that amount of time is subtracted from the current time. And that way when we get back to looking at the image again, this timer is gonna have a new duration because the time remaining value has been updated. Okay, then since we're already at the, we're already like doing the gaze checking, we might as well have a variable that is logging the amount of time they've spent looking at the target. And so we're saying the time accumulated target, I haven't mentioned this yet, but at the beginning of the trial, this value is set to zero. But when they leave the image, we're gonna say that variable's value is equal to its current value plus the amount of time they just spent looking at the image. So this value in parentheses is the same as the value in parentheses for the first line. Okay, so we're basically updating our duration for our timer and we're logging that amount of time that they spent looking at it to our little variable that tallies the amount of time they spent looking at the target. Okay, so at that point, we would go back to the null action and start waiting for the eye to look at the target again. And, the, and then when they look at it again, we'll go back to waiting for either the timer trigger to fire or for the eye to go off the region, but at some point the timer trigger will fire because they have accumulated enough duration on the target. And at that point, we can set time remaining to zero because they've completed the accumulated looking for the trial. And then we can say the time accumulated target is gonna basically do the same thing that we did when they leave the target, except now we're gonna say the accumulated looking on the target is equal to the current time minus the time when they started looking at the target on this most recent round of looking at the target. So we're doing like one final update to tally um, the most recent look event at the target to our time accumulated target variable. Okay, so that's how the accumulated looking stuff works. And that's for the study trials. For the test trials, it's really the exact same concept. It's just doubled. So you have one loop for the target and one loop for the distractor. And the invisible boundary triggers for, so you can see here's one loop here, kind of goes back up to the same off image. Then they can, so when they get to the off image, they can either look at the target or they can look at the distractor. And when they're looking at the target, they can either leave the target, at which point we go back to off image, or the, the time remaining can be kind of accumulated in its final round, and then we can end the trial. And the same thing for the distractor loop. They, they can look at the distractor. Oh, it looks like I have this labeled backwards. So this actually says distractor here on the left, but it's 
I'll, I'll fix that in the PowerPoint. But basically, this, this says target loop. It should say distracted loop. This says distracted loop should say target. But the idea is the same. So here, when they look at um, the other image, I'll say, because it's backwards here, then they'll either leave that image or they'll accumulate the amount of time in, in the trial. OK, so the the differences here are that the invisible boundary triggers used here and here are referring to interest areas around either the target or the distractor, depending on which loop we're talking about. And the update attribute action that updates the amount of time when we kind of look away from that image, it is updating the accumulated target variable for the target loop and the accumulated distractor variable for the distractor loop. Okay, so now let's take a look at the actual example so we can see in more detail. So this is the example, it's called an accumulated looking study test. And at the beginning, we just display some instructions, wait for a key press, calibrate the eye tracker, and then we start our trial loop. And just like in all our other kind of experiment builder examples, we have a data source and you can access it by clicking this data source property. And we have a few row, a few columns here. One column is just a unique identifier for each trial. Another column is the block type. So we have a study block, then a test block, then a study block, then a test block. Then we have a condition. So this is like, um, for the study trials, this is what type of image the study image is. Is it a flat, an image of a flower or a tree? So let me just show you, if I bring up the library manager, you can see that we have some images of flowers here and some images of trees. These are all from beautiful Ottawa, Canada. So some, um, we have two different categories of images, flowers and trees. And so they're gonna, in the study phase, they're gonna study one flower image and one trees image. And, and then in the test phase, they're gonna either have a target flower and a target tree and if the target is flower, then, so the the, start, the test trials will always have one flower image and one tree image. And when the target is a flower image, then the flower image will be one of the ones that they studied in the study phase. And the trees image will be a new image that is not the exact trees image that they studied in the study phase. Okay, so we have these two columns here target image and distractor image. In the study trials, we're just using this column. And in the test trials, we're using both of these columns. And the idea is that in the study, in the study phase, they will study either a flower or a trees image on each trial. And so these will be like the old images for the test phase. And then in the test phase on each trial, they will get one old image and one new image. And that old image or the target image will either be a flower or a tree. So you can see for this for this test trial here, the target image is trees one, which indeed is one of the images that was studied. And the distractor image is flowers two, which is not one of the images that was studied. And the same thing goes for the second um, kind of fate or block of trials where you have a study block and a test block. Okay, and then we have a couple other columns here that are specifying where the target's going to be positioned either on the um, in, in the study trials it will be positioned in the center of the screen so th this project uses a display resolution of 1920 by 1080 and so 960 540 is the center of the screen so the target it it's it's really the study image for the study trials but the target the image is going to be positioned in the center of the screen and then for the test trials the target is either going to be on the left and the distractor on the right or the target will be on the right and the distractor on the left and um so this is this these two columns are referenced from the location property of the image resources that are actually presenting um the images so like this is a study trial and you can see it's referring to the location of this image resource is referring to that target location column. Okay, this is just like normal experiment builder stuff. Then um, we have a block column that's just used to help us control the randomization. So we want, we want to ensure, we want to randomize maybe within the trials of the block, but we want our block order to not be randomized. 
And so that's what we're doing here. And you can get more information on how randomization works from a tutorial series. Okay, so that's this, and this is gonna cycle through all eight of our trials in the experiment. And on each trial, we're first gonna check whether or should we recalibrate variable is equal to one. And if so, we're gonna get on here and recalibrate the eye tracker. Notice that the initial value of this variable is set to zero. So then the first trial, we're definitely not gonna pass, we're definitely not gonna go this way. We're gonna go this way. And we're gonna get to the reset variables action, which is gonna reset this back to zero, um, set our time remaining to 5,000, and then um, kind of log the total amount that's been accumulated on the target and the distractor set those variables back to zero. So that's just resetting the values of these variables. Okay, then we're going to check, is this a test trial? In which case we're gonna go this way. So we're checking, is this a test trial? And if so, we'll go this way. If it's not a test trial, we'll go this way to the recording study um, sequence. And if we go, if it's not a test trial, we're gonna go over here and do one of these study trials. And so at the beginning of the study trial, we're gonna present a cross on the screen. And you can see I have a little interest area drawn around that. Um, and then we'll wait for the eye to look at that cross for a minimum consecutive duration of 500 milliseconds. And once that happens, we'll start presenting the images. Or if they don't look at the cross in 10 seconds, we're gonna set our, should we recalibrate variable to one? And that will ensure that when we get to the next trial and we're starting this process again, we're gonna go over this way and do a little recalibration of the eye tracker and then reset its value back to zero. So that's kind of how we do the auto drift check. Okay, then let's go back in here. Once we present the image, and this is presented here because we have an, an image resource that was added using this button, and you can see its source file name property is referring to this target image column, and its location property is referring to this target location column. Um, it doesn't really change in the study trial, so you, I didn't really need to do that. I could have just hard-coded the position for this one, but that's okay. Um, then there's an interest area, and I set it up so that this, you, you might notice this interest area is not corresponding to the location of this, but you can see its location, width, and height properties refer to the location, width, and height of this image resource, so wherever this goes, and if you change its size or whatever, the, the size of the interest area will dynamically be updated as well. So that way you don't have to worry about changing both the image resource and the interest area. Okay, anyway, so this is gonna surround the image. And as soon as the images are presented, we're gonna start our little loop here. And we're, we're now just waiting for the eye to look at the image. And when it looks at the image, then one of two things can happen. This timer trigger can fire because five seconds in the first instance five seconds can elapse or they can look away and when they look away from the image we're going to now say okay let's update our time remaining variable and let's subtract from that the difference between the time when they left the image and the time when they um started looking at the image and that difference is the amount of time that they just spent looking at the image. So we're saying let's subtract that most recent round of looking at the image from our overall time remaining, or in other words, kind of update our stopwatch, our time, our countdown timer. Um, and then let's also log that amount of time that they spent looking at the target to our little time accumulated target variable. And then, and this process will just kind of re repeat over and over and over until they are looking at the image and the amount of time that is remaining um, elapses. And at that point, we'll end the trial. And when we end the trial, we'll set our time remaining to zero because they've completed the accumulated looking and we'll do one final update to our time accumulated target variable, okay? And then finally, and then after we do that, we're gonna blank the screen out here and then just write a, a row to a tab delimited text file that can be used to log the values of the behavioral data variables, in other words, these variables here, and log the values of our data source columns. Um, this information is gonna automatically be logged to the EDF file, so you'll have access to it in Data Viewer, but this will give us an extra little text file that has the 
values of these things. Okay, so that's the, I think that's kind of cool, actually, like how this little structure works. Then we're gonna, once we do an, all our test trials in our data, or, or sorry, once we do our study trials in the data source, we're gonna move on to some test trials. And at that point, our little check test conditional trigger is gonna direct us to go over this way. And this structure, as I mentioned, is like very similar to the study trials structure. The only difference is that we have two of these looping structures, one looping structure here for the distractor and one looping structure here for the target. And um, they are set up very similarly. So let's just take a look at the distractor se sequence. You can see that it, it is referring to a distractor interest area. So if we go into this display screen action, we now have two image resources and one of them is referring to the target image column for its source file name or the name of the image file to be used and one's referring to, and the location property is referring to the target location column so it's basically using this column and this column to determine which image is presented and where it's presented so that way we can kind of move these the target around from trial to trial and it's not always in the same position okay then um we have a distractor image resource. And this image resource refers to the distractor location column for its location property and the image loca and the image column, the distractor image column for its um, source file name property. And so it's getting its information from this and from this. And the interest areas for these things are linked just like in the other one to the appropriate image resource so we have two interest areas one for the distractor and one for the target okay so that's how we're presenting the stimuli and then our invisible boundary trigger notice it is referring to only the target image and make for the invisible boundary on target trigger and the invisible boundary on distractor trigger is referring only to the distractor image um, so when they look at the distractor, we're going to start like from that point, one of two things can happen. They can either look off of the distractor. So this is the same thing. It just has within unchecked or they can accumulate enough time looking at that um, from our time remaining variable and then we'll end the trial. And when if if they look away before they accumulate the amount of time, then we're going to update our time remaining variable just like we did before, except now we're just using the top invisible boundary off distractor minus invisible boundary on distractor and using that to update it. And we're updating a variable called time accumulated distractor. So on this distractor loop, we're updating the variable that is logging how much time they've looked at the distractor. And in the target loop, it's the same type of thing, but our invisible boundary triggers are linked to the target here and here. And we're updating the time accumulated target variable rather than time accumulated distractor um, so and we're using the target invisible boundary triggers in our calculations so it's basically the same type of thing um, and then when the trial ends we're doing one final update to time remaining and to our time accumulated distractor or to our time accumulated target so that's how this works and um, it looks a little bit complicated when you first take a look at it, but it's really not that complicated once you kind of get into the nitty gritty of how it works. So um, let's give it a little test run and see how it's working. So um, I, ha I have learned that when you are using this webinar software and you test run an experiment builder project, it kills the video recording. So I'm going to turn on a webcam here that's pointed at the computer monitor so that you can see what I see as I do the test run. Okay, so pointed at the computer monitor, sorry, it's a little bit of a blurry webcam, but hopefully it will illustrate what's happening. And I have a host PC here. I have a display PC that's gonna be running Experiment Builder. Then I have a, an iLink 1000 Plus host PC and I have it running in mouse simulation mode. So I'm just gonna simulate the gaze position with a mouse on the host PC. You're not gonna be able to see me do that, so I'll kind of try to talk through what I'm doing. 
Um, so let's uh, close this. Okay, so let me do a test run here. And it gives you a little warning. Um, when you're doing a test run, don't use this. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Don't use a test run for real data collection, only use it for testing projects. If you want to collect, let me just cancel for a second. If you want to collect real data, you would first deploy the project and then run the executable. So that just goes for Experiment Builder in general. But since we're just testing it, I'm going to do a test run project, a test run of the project. Okay, and so I'll say that's fine. <clears throat> and it's building the project. And then it asks for the name of the, of the EDF file, the eye checking data file. Um, that's going to be saved, and I'll just use the default test. And now the project is getting ready. And at the beginning, it has some instructions. So this is before we get into the eye tracker calibration. So I'm just going to press a key to skip that. And at this point, we're at the camera setup mode. And this is where you would normally calibrate the eye tracker. But since I'm running in mouse simulation mode, I'm going to skip this and just press O for output record. And there, the cross appeared. And sorry, I just very quickly <laughs> reached over to the host PC and moved the gaze position off of the image, okay, like after about a second or two. So the, the, that cross that appeared at the very beginning was our auto drift check. And the gaze cursor in mouse simulation mode will just automatically start at the center of the screen. And so after about a half a second, it fired and moved onto the image presentation. And I moved the gaze position off of the image just to show that the trial will not end right now because the our little our participant, which we call Mousy or something, is off the image. So let's let's move Mousy's eyes back onto the image for a few seconds, and then you'll see the trial will end. Okay, so we just accumulated the remaining time. I'm moving it off. We're on trial two now. I moved it off, and now I'll move it back on, off and on and off and on, and I'm leaving it on, and then after a few seconds it will end. Okay, so now we're at the study phase. I mean, at the test phase. And so we have a target image and a distractor image. And I actually can't remember which one is the target and which is the distractor, but I'll just move it back and forth from target to it. So I'm right now moving the gaze cursor back and forth from target to distractor. And at some point it accumulated five seconds. And I'll do the same thing here. Just kind of accumulate back and forth in the two different um, images. And then it ends. Okay. And then run. Study trial, another study trial. So this is the third block. And I'm just leaving the gaze cursor on it so we can quickly get through it. And I'll just do the same thing. I'll move it back and forth on the two different images. Okay, and then for the final trial, I'll just move it onto one of the images and leave it there for five seconds. Okay, and then the run ends. And I'm, I'm mostly wanting to, do, let me turn the webcam off here. I'm mostly wanting to do, do this just to show you what's recorded in in terms of the values of these variables here i mean the these time accumulated target and time accumulated distractor so if i go into the this is the project folder if i go into the results folder for that participant i should have called it mousy um, then we can open up the results file and i'm just going to open it with excel okay and you can see for our so each of these rows is a different trial, and we have our um, our study trials are the first two rows, then test, then study, and then test. And you can see, let me just kind of expand these a little bit better. Okay, so you can see for the study trials, we should have about five seconds. It should be within a millisecond or two, probably of the of the uh, maybe three of the accumulated looking duration. So there's going to be a little bit of like maybe a brief delays, um, but it, it's very small. So within just a few milliseconds. And so in the study trials, they, it's going to be almost exactly 5,000 because that's how much time they have to accumulate. And then in the test trials, you should have a duration on the target and a duration on the distractor. And these two values should add up to almost exactly 5,000. So that's going to tell you how their gaze was distributed across those two different things. And so for you can see for these trials, it should add up. You can see that adds up to almost exactly 5,000. And then here's here are the durations for the um, final test phase, and you can see adds up to 5,000. 
And remember on the last trial, I said, I'm just gonna move it onto one image and leave it there. And so that's why we have about 5,000 on one of the images and zero on the other. So that is basically how this accumulate looking paradigm works. Um, I would encourage you, um, if any of this is unclear, you can take a look back through that PowerPoint or just don't hesitate to get in touch with us. If you have any questions, send us an email, post on our support forums, call us, whatever, you, however you want, would prefer to get in touch, like don't hesitate. We're happy to answer your questions. Um, and hopefully this little template here will help you to get started and give you kind of a framework for, for conducting your accumulated looking experiment. So good luck out there, happy tracking, and hope everybody's staying so safe and healthy.